Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is May 12th, and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery. So this is looking back on, let's go all the way back to May 10th here and 11th. And on the 10th, you can see that we did have that thunderstorm development across some of the Sierra Nevada, Southern Sierra Nevada, and down towards the transverse ranges here. You can see some lightning strikes across uh, Nevada and portions of Utah and Northern Arizona. And then we scroll through the overnight hours that uh, activity wanes. And then as we went through yesterday, you can see most of that thunderstorm activity was off to the east there. It does not look like we got any lightning strikes across some of the higher terrain, but that may not be the case as we go through the next few days. We do have this chance for some thunderstorm activity here across some of the higher terrain of the Sierra Nevada and across Nevada here as well. We'll dive into those details. But looking closer here, you can see that we have that marine layer. It is entrenched into the Bay Area, down the central coast for many areas, Los Angeles, San Diego Metro, you can see from Northern California as well. But if you go inland there, you can see from this Mother's Day, you've got a lot of sunshine here already this morning morning. You can see the extent of that stratus marine layer out there all the way out across the Pacific Ocean. Nice stuff on the GOES-18 satellite imagery. So this day back in May 12th here, 2014, check it out. This is in my wheelhouse here. The dust devil in Fullerton came abruptly out of the west with estimated wind gusts of 60 miles per hour. It carried large amounts of dust and leaves, damaged portions of roof shingles on a few houses. If you haven't, check out the playlist on the Pacific Northwest Weather Watch channel page and check out my dust devil videos here. I've cut a numerous of them. I've seen thousands of dust devils I go out chasing them in eastern Washington here. So that's kind of an interesting weather phenomenon for me to see. And you can see uh, in 2001, downdraft winds from showers over ridge accelerated down the north slopes of the San Bernardino Mountains into Apple Valley. Wind gusts to 62 miles per hour near zero visibility in blowing dust. And a wind gust of 82 miles per hour occurred at Granite Mountain just north of Apple Valley here. In 1998, we were in the last gasp of that very strong Super El Nino we had. It looks like a Padres home game was rained out then. Now, if we take a look at the upper levels of the atmosphere at 18,000 feet, there's that system there sliding off to the east. And we're going to start to build another ridge here as we go through next week. It's probably going to allow us to warm up some. You can see that pretty dominant feature here, at least for much of the southwest. Still have this trough hanging back here as a result of this high pressure set up over the Pacific Ocean here. We've got some systems trying to swing down through the Pacific Northwest as we go on in towards next weekend. Now, if we take a look here at Hanford National Weather Service, also calling attention here to the thunderstorm threat there for the Sierra Nevada Sunday, Monday, uh, and Tuesday afternoon coming up here. And I'll show you more on that here on the high resolution models in a moment. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Las Vegas, 91 degrees. Happy Mother's Day to my own mom as well. She's watching this. Lake Havasu City may hit 100 degrees today. Bishop, 87. This was generated this morning here, May 12th. Now, if we, uh, there's some new marine forecasts coming just in case any mariners want to know here. Check it out. The coastal water forecast will look different starting with the afternoon forecast here. It's the old version, new version there. Just a quick heads up. So, if we take a look at Sacramento, Vacaville, Red Bluff, Redding, check it out. Nice and warm for many areas. And if you want to get some relief there, you can take your mom out to the coastal areas here. You can see San Francisco 66. Look at Fort Bragg, a chilly 60. Eureka 61 versus much warmer temperatures across Modesto, Merced, and Stockton, Sonora. 82 degrees. If we take a look at Southern California, you can see again, right along the immediate close, you're going to get some cooler temperatures. You go inland a bit here, Anaheim 78, Ontario 82, Palm Springs 101, Thermal 101. You know, get pretty warm once you go east of the mountains, especially into the desert areas. And just a reminder that geomagnetic storm is still ongoing. I know a lot of places didn't see it last night, but there is the potential again tonight if you do not have any clouds obscuring your view. And they do talk about this, this was updated this morning about 6 p.m. 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here, and it could be a severe to extreme geomatic magnetic storm coming. So again, it's best to kind of watch social media here and get information from the spaceweather.gov and check things out there to see if you have any chance of seeing the Aurora Borealis tonight. Now looking at thunderstorm activity, you can see for Northeast California, some Oregon here in the Sierra Nevada for today. And this is looking at, it gives you a nice timeline here. So as of 20Z, that's about 1 p.m. You can see that's when the thunderstorm activity is supposed to start to ramp up a little bit here across the Sierra Nevada and portions of Northeast California. California, and you can see it continues on through the evening hours. This is for tomorrow. Again, the Sierra Nevada just south of Reno there. So trying to get up towards Lake Tahoe here, portions of extreme western Nevada. And this is a four day three here. Again, back across Nevada and for the Sierra Nevada here. And if you want a nice affordable home weather station, if you live around some of these areas and get some of these lightning strikes, got a lightning detection system with it, ultrasonic anemometer, it stores a lot of data for you in the cloud. I highly recommend this station's got great widgets for your smartphone. Now take a look at 
composite reflectivity for the next few days. The North American model, three kilometer resolution. There, this is hot off the presses. You see, as we go through this afternoon, it does fire up some showers near Lake Tahoe, down across the Sierra Nevada here, and then it starts to wane that as we go through the evening and nighttime hours. Now we're going to look at Monday afternoon again. You can see some of that firing up, even kind of outside Las Vegas here near the California Nevada border. Watch out for that. You might get a shower or two across portions of Nevada as well, Ely, Nevada also. And then you can see as we go on in through Tuesday, it fires them up again across portions of central Nevada and the Sierra Nevada as well. So kind of in that thunderstorm regime there for the uh, Sierra Nevada. Now taking a look at the wind speeds here, uh, pretty typical stuff, strong northwest wind down the coastline, pretty typical this time of year. The westerlies are surging across the mountain area, some gusty northerly winds as we go through tonight. And some of these thunderstorms could kick off some locally gusty winds here as well. And then you can see again, when we go to the afternoon and evening hours, we really ramp this up as we get the big differential between the Pacific Ocean and the warming up of the interior portions of the southwest USA. And then we're going to do that one more time here again, again Tuesday. Now, if we take a look at the HER, the high resolution rapid refresh, this runs every single hour. And this is lightning flash density potential. Does not show much popping off across the Sierra Nevada today. So a little bit of model discrepancy here in the short term. And as we scroll off in through Monday, it does pop those off near Reno here, even towards Lake Tahoe in the Sierra Nevada again, and probably again on Tuesday. Now, taking a look at the National Planet models, you can see these very warm temperatures out there. Check it out, 90s all the way up into the North Valley here. You know, that typical, uh, much cooler along the coastline regime that we're dealing with here. And warmer temperatures inland is in full effect right now. Here we go through tomorrow. There's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I mean, look at some of these temperatures on Wednesday, actually. Approaching 100 degrees there for Redding or Red Bluff. Very hot. Maybe 107, 108 for Death Valley. Some warm temperatures across the desert areas also. And you can see Thursday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe a bit of a cool off here coming as we go on to, towards next weekend. We'll see how that trends and we'll revisit that on a daily basis. Taking a look at total precipitation in inches, national blend of models. So we're going to scroll through about 11 days worth of forecast information here. And you can see really not much except for Northeast California, maybe a shower or two across some of the higher terrain, but the Sierra Nevada, maybe some thunderstorm activity over the next few days, as we mentioned, but not much precipitation elsewhere across the state of California, not even for Arizona, that much for that matter in some portions of Nevada, just a couple thunderstorms. Now looking at the six to 10 day outlook, we've got this above average signal here across the Southwest and an above average signal here for precipitation. We'll see how that trends here. I mean, this could be kind of thunderstorm driven here, but I'm not sure what's really driving that across Southern California. Uh, take that with a grain of salt. And this is the eight to 14 day, kind of an interesting switch up here as we start to drop some troughing down here across the West Coast. We'll, we'll see how that trends, but you can see the below average signal there across portions of Southern California and still an above average signal there for some portions of the Southwest. Um, but yeah, anyway, good stuff here. If you get a chance, you might want to, again, pay attention to the geomagnetic storm for tonight. If you have any uh, interest in seeing that, uh, the Aurora Borealis was a pretty interesting show that we did have uh, the night before last night here. I didn't stay up too long. I just left the GoPro running and I did not see any uh, solar activity here at my house last night on my GoPro night time lapse. But anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.